In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a professional slideshow like this. Okay, to get started, I just added a few images to my timeline, but some of them don't fit in the frame. To fix these, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then select all the image clips that don't fit, then right click one of them and select scale to frame size. Okay, this looks better now, but there's still these black bars, so let's click in our timeline's gray area to deselect our clips. And then select the first one you'd like to resize. Go up to Effect Controls, and drag the scale's value to the right to increase your image's size. And we'll do the same thing for our other one. Remember, you can easily select your image by moving the playhead over it. Okay, this is looking better now, so let's move on to the blurred background. With the selection tool, drag to select all your image clips. Then while holding down the Alt key, drag them up onto the track above to duplicate them. For the next step, we're going to click this eye toggle to hide our top track. All right, now only select the very first clip on the bottom track, and then go over to the effects panel. In the search box, type Gaussian blur, and drag it onto that first clip. Be sure to position the playhead over that clip as well so you can see it as you make your edits. Now up in effect controls, change the blurriness to 400. And make sure you have repeat edge pixels checked to get rid of that black border. To add it to your remaining clips, right click Gaussian blur and select copy. Then drag to select your remaining clips on the bottom track and use the Ctrl V keyboard shortcut to paste the blur onto the other clips. Okay, now that we have our blur, let's click the eye toggle again so we can see our top images. All right, next let's give our images an animation. So select the first image on the top track and then go up to effect controls. In here, make sure the playhead is positioned near the start of the clip. Then change the scale to 80 so that we can see the background behind our image. Now click the stopwatch next to scale to create a starting keyframe. Next, move the playhead to the very end of your clip and increase the scale to 90. This will automatically create a second keyframe. And now when we play this back, we have this nice looking slow zoom animation. To quickly add it to all your other clips, back in effect controls, right click on motion and select copy. Then drag to select the rest of your image clips on the top track and use the Ctrl V keyboard shortcut to paste the zoom effect. Okay, this looks nice, but let's give it a border. Go over to the effects panel and type radial shadow into the search box. Drag the effect onto your first clip on the top track. Now in effect controls under the radial shadow effect, the first thing we'll want to change is the shadow color. I think white borders tend to look better, so let's do white. Then be sure to check resize layer so that you can actually see your border. Next, set the opacity to 100 so that the border isn't transparent at all. You also might want to decrease the project distance to around 5 so that the border isn't too thick. And finally, we're just going to drag the light source's first value to the side to reposition it so that it's centered horizontally behind our photo and then drag the light source's second value to center it vertically. Okay, next up, let's give our border a drop shadow. So back in the effects panel, type drop shadow into the search box. Drag the effect onto your first clip on the top track. Now in effect controls, let's increase the opacity all the way up to 100. Set the distance to 85 so we can actually see it and put the softness at 135 so it looks like a shadow and not another border. Okay, this looks good, but we still need to apply this border to our other photos. So while holding down the control key, select both your radial shadow and drop shadow in that order, otherwise this won't work right. Then use the control C keyboard shortcut to copy them. Now drag to select your other clips on your top track and use the control V shortcut to paste your effects. Okay, this is turning out great. So all that's left to do is add transitions. One last time, go over to the effects panel and type slide into the search box. Right click the slide transition and select make default transition. Then drag to select all your image clips and go up to sequence, apply video transition, which will add it to all your clips. 
Okay, this was really efficient, but we don't actually need the transition at the beginning or end. So while holding down the shift key on your keyboard, select those transitions and then use the delete key to get rid of them. We have all these slide transitions now, but a little variety would look nicer. So what we can do is select one of them and in effect controls, use these little arrows to change where it comes in from. Just remember, you have to change the direction for both slide transitions for any given cut. But yeah, that was the last step, so that's all from me. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.